anybody ever get it where like their ear pops and then you can like hear yourself talk and breathe? That's what happened to me right now and it is the most annoying thing in the entire world. Help me. everybody it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my June wrap-up for 2020 I read a total of 12 books so I will be splitting this up into two different parts this is part one featuring the first six books that I read this month so without further ado let us get started so to make this easier on me for editing I'm starting with all the ebooks that I read this month because there's actually quite a few of them because I tried to get my NetGalley e arcs down so if you guys are interested in seeing that journey then I have a eARC NetGalley vlog thing that you guys can check out if you're interested. It'll be linked down below. But the first book was Tom Ryan's Keep This to Yourself, and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows a small town called Camera Cove. A year ago, they were hit by a serial killer named the Catalog Killer who took the four lives of people in the town. Mac and his friends and the rest of the town are trying to move past these four murders, but it's a little bit harder for Mac because his best friend Connor was the last victim. When Mac finds a cryptic note from Connor before his death, he decides to start up an investigation of his own with the help of a boy he just met, and it's kind of the story of that. I'm personally a very big fan of serial killer books. I just find them so fascinating, so I was initially very excited for this. I really liked how I had no idea who the murderer was. I think that it was a really good twist because usually I am able to call the murderer, serial killer, whatever from miles away, but it, that was not the case with this book. There were so many like little clues that pointed towards who the killer was and I'm kind of annoyed at myself for not figuring it out because it was so obvious once it was explained to you. I'm really happy that I wasn't able to figure it out anyways. I will say like my biggest complaint for the book was that the ending was way too far-fetched. Like that would never happen in real life the way it was all wrapped up. That kind of bothered me, but other than that, it was a decent read. I liked Mac as a main character, but I definitely was not very interested in the love interest Quill. There just didn't seem to be a lot of chemistry between the two of them. Like, the only thing that they really had in common was that they were both gay, and it was like, because we're the only two gay people in this town, might as well hook up, and it just did not work for me. I also was not the biggest fan of the side characters. I don't think any of them were fleshed out, so it was very hard to tell them apart from one another, but other than that, like overall, it was a really quick, fun, easy read, so 3.5 out of 5. The next ebook I read was They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman. I ended up giving this 3 out of 5 stars. It follows a girl named Jill Newman who attends a prestigious private school. In her freshman year, her best friend Shayla Arnold is murdered by her boyfriend Graham. Three years later, Jill is a part of the Players, which is an elite group at Gold Coast Prep. They basically get whatever they want, and that's when she starts receiving text messages from Rachel, who is Graham's older sister, claiming that he is innocent, so then things get a little bit complicated for her. So now Jill needs to decide who she is going to trust and who she believes, and it's kind of like the story of that. Honestly, I think that this was more of a like 2.75 out of a five star for me but I'm rounding it up to a three just because of the crappy way that Goodreads rates books. I'm a little bit disappointed in this because I had guessed who the killer was within the first like 20 pages of the book but I thought that it was way too obvious so obviously they would not be the killer but then it ended up being the killer and I was just like that was stupid. So that was the biggest disappointment for me was just how soon I could figure it out. I also think that the plot was a little bit slow. There was just so much focus on the player drama rather than like the murder mystery which this book was advertised as. I was interested in the players and what they were all about but they were really annoying because they were literally given everything on a silver platter and they still had the audacity to complain about literally everything. Like, they had to go for donuts and bring them to the seniors and they were like pissed off that they had to do that and it's like you're literally getting test scores and like free admission to college and stuff because you're part of this group and you don't want to go get donuts for five minutes of your life. Like, 
it just bothered me so much. I did like Jill as a main character and her development throughout the story. I loved how in the end she finally realized that the players didn't have to be this thing that she put onto a pedestal and like worshipped. I also really liked how the story switched from the past to the present but it was done in a way that wasn't jarring to read so that was good but yeah, overall, like, it was fun while it lasted, but I don't think it's anything super memorable. The next book I don't have too much to say about. It's called The Amber Anthem. It's part of the Five Worlds graphic novel series by Mark Siegel. I gave it a two out of five stars. I, it's the fourth in the series, so I can't really say much about it other than basically it follows these three unlikely friends who travel the five worlds to try to light the beacons to save the world and, like... I did like the color scheme of the panels in this. It's very similar to the other ones where it follows the color that the beacon that they are trying to light. So for example, the last book was the red beacon, so it had a lot of red tinges and color hues to it. This one was the amber beacon, so there was a lot of like yellows and things like that. I also really liked how it talked about like underlying issues like racism and everybody being equal. Overall, like I don't think this series is very memorable. I only read it because it showed up in in my inbox and they were like read it so I was like okay cool so yeah nothing memorable two out of five stars the next book that I have is called Good Girls Lie this is by JT Ellison and I gave this a four out of five stars this book follows the daughters of the rich and famous who attend good school in West Virginia in the hopes of attending an Ivy League school Ash is among one of these hopeful attendees and basically as long as the girls pretend to follow the rules of the honor code then the secret societies that are at good school are allowed to run but then when a girl is found dead there are rumors that there was a secret circulating that caused her to take her own life. But secrets can no longer be hidden at good school and they are going to have to come out sooner or later and it's like the story of that. I read JT Ellison's lie to me last year I believe and I really enjoyed it. I actually have a review for that book if you want to check it out I will also leave that down below but when I saw that she was writing another book I got super excited and instantly requested it on NetGalley. I was hooked on this book right from the beginning like I could not put it down. I needed to keep reading in order to figure out what happened to the story. At the very beginning the first chapter you are told about the death and then you're thrown back in time and it kind of is the events leading up to the death and I really liked how that was told. I just really enjoyed trying to piece the whole mystery together and what happened to the girl and I also really like how it was told in alternating point of views but in some of the point of views you had no idea who was talking. That was very similar to how Lie to Me was told and I just really like that writing style. I was also a huge fan of the epilogue. I did not see it coming at all so I think that it was a very good addition to the story. I was also a big fan of Ash and I really liked how at times you felt very sympathetic towards her, but then other times you had no idea whether or not you could trust her. So like unreliable narrator to the max, which I am personally a huge fan of. Overall, it was a super quick, very exciting, very thrilling read. So four out of five stars. The next book I picked up was Given to the Sea by Mindy McGinnis, and I gave this a three out of five stars. This book follows Kosa, whose soul purpose of being born is to be given back to the sea as a sacrifice. The sacrifice is meant to be impregnated before they are given back to the sea in order to calm the waves for destroying the kingdom that it surrounds. Kosa is touch diverse so this makes it very difficult for her being the chosen and even though the sea calls to her she is unable to go to it until she is impregnated. So Kosa is taken to the palace where she meets Vincent who is the prince and his twin siblings Donal and Dara. While Kosa is trying to choose a mate, there is a war brewing between the people of Estilla and Pietra and it's like the story of that. So I was initially really excited to read this because it's Mindy McGinnis who wrote The Female of the Species, which I was a huge fan of, but upon reading it, I was very disappointed and then I found out that apparently all of her books are very different from each other and it's like kind of her thing to write drastically different books. But in my opinion, this was very mediocre. I just did not care about any of the characters or what happened to them. There's also like this weird love square thing that also is involving the two siblings and it's just weird. 
Like, even though they're adoptive siblings, like, I'm still not here for it. The story is told in four different points of view, which was interesting, but I think that two of them, Wit and Dara, just were unnecessary. Like, we could have just had the point of view of Kosa and Vincent, and the story would have still been the same. Like, I understand that the point of Wit's chapters were to talk about the war, because he's, like, a very big part of that, but Dara's chapters were just kind of, like, not necessary. They could have just been included in Vincent's or Kosa's telling of the story and you still would have gotten the same gist of everything. Also, just the treatment of women in general in this book was just like gross and like I get that it's the point but I just like did not have a good time reading it so yeah three out of five stars. The next book is The Need by Helen Phillips and I gave this a two out of five stars. This book follows Molly who is alone one night with her two children when she hears an intruder in her house and her husband is away on a business trip so she has to deal with this intruder by herself and it's like the story of that. I honestly have no idea what this book was about like it was so weird and I don't know if I'm just like not smart enough to understand what this book was about but I was not a fan. The book did go by very quickly but I think that's because I just wanted to keep reading because I was so dang confused that it just bothered me that I wasn't understanding like the symbolism and the metaphors of things and again I don't know if it's just because I'm dumb or not but yeah I don't like this book so I gave it a two out of five stars but I really like the cover so that's depressing <laughs> all right everybody so that was my part one of my June wrap-up part two will be up on Friday so check that out let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video goodbye